Welcome back to the License to Sin YouTube channel. We're doing something a little bit different tonight. If you look around, there's no ace. Okay, so this is pretty much a couple hours after y'all watched us tear down the six liter LQ4 motor that's going into the red 86 C10. Now last night off camera, I took the time to basically port one of the heads. So if you look, in here this is the unported head you get a little bit of light in there see so completely unported and then uh, last night you can't see it very well but i've basically uh, lowered the swirl ramp and opened uh, reshaped the valve guide and opened it up not a significant amount but uh, pretty much uh, enough to help flow. It's hard to get light in there. Let's see. Yeah, that's too much. There. So just reshaped around the valve guides to try to redirect airflow into the valve a little bit easier. Now, I didn't do a big crazy port job because this is going in a truck. So I need to retain all the pretty much low end torque. So, what I'm going to do tonight, since it's not 101 degrees during the, at night, you know, it's a nice 84 degrees in the shop, I'm going to go ahead and set up a time lapse while I start working on this uh, second head, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right. Alright guys, pretty much we're a couple hours later. I didn't really keep track of time, but 
for the most part, I've got the second cylinder head done. Now, as you can see, it's a uh, should have a significant pickup and flow. And since these are 862 heads, which are designed for a 5.3 liter, we're putting them on a boosted six liter. So any kind of pickup and flow here uh, should make a pretty good difference. Is uh, not to mention uh, we're going to be picking up quite a bit of compression going with these smaller chambers. But uh, I have to get me a new mandrel so I can actually go in and like further smooth these up because my mandrels for my sanding wheels. I uh, decided to break while I was porting last night. So, pretty much all the rough port is 100% complete. I'm uh, extremely satisfied with it. And the uh, only thing I've really got left is I want to go in here around these edges and I want to do some, some cylinder softening. If you go in and round all these sharp edges around the cylinders and basically take out a lot of these rough spots or any kind of real high spots in the actual combustion chamber itself will significantly reduce the chance of detonation. And considering this is going to be a higher compression, uh, basically a higher compression boosted motor, I'm going to do everything I can to, to help make it be as uh, detonation resistant as possible. I might come in later and, and, and actually soften all these, but it's probably, I don't know what time we got going on here. Yeah, it's 12.47 in the morning. And I'm sure my neighbors don't want to hear my air compressor running for a few more hours, considering they've already been running for probably two and a half, three hours total. Uh, I think that's where I'm going to leave it off today. All right, now, it's been a few days. I finally went and bought me some more mandrels. And, uh have actually had a little bit of time and I've went ahead and completely finished uh, one head. So if you look at this head, this is a, a completely untouched as far as chamber. So you can't really tell, but all the edges and everything are, they're almost knife edged, like all around here. And it's even sharper around there, even though that's a kind of a, an off angle. But if you was to push hard enough, this would probably actually cut you. Now that little ridge right there can actually get hot enough to cause detonation. So what I've done now on this head, basically, all those edges now have been rounded over and then i took and slightly smoothed out this rough textured area in the actual chamber itself uh, by smoothing that up and actually polishing that you can actually reduce the amount of carbon that sticks in the head i'm not that worried about it so i just knocked it down slightly while i was working it and then around all the edges around the spark plug hole. There was a pretty sharp ridge there. Pretty much all the ridges now have been rounded over and smoothed. And I've, you can't really tell that much. You can't get lights in there, but I've smoothened up the exhaust ports, put a little bit better finish on them. Again, keeps carbon from sticking. You don't actually want that kind of finish on the intake port. So with that being said, now I'm going to spend probably the next two hours and go ahead and knock out the second head. Uh, and then these will pretty much be ready for me to uh, either go get a valve job done or possibly just use some valve grounding compound and reseat the valves. And I'm even contemplating getting these heads milled a little bit, which if I do get them milled, I'll have to come back and retouch the uh, edges again. But that's part of engine building. All right, guys. Uh, I might time lapse a little bit. So I'll come back and see you in just a little bit.
All right guys, pretty much got about another two hours worth of work into this head. I'm fairly certain I am complete. Uh, as you can see, now everything is nice and radiused. If you look inside the exhaust ports, we got pretty good, or it's pretty smooth going around all the valve guides. I did have to go back and uh, remove the, uh, I believe it's the one of the rocker stand bosses that uh, I had actually not taken out as much as I did on the other head. So I went ahead and went back and re-hit that one when I was working on this head. Uh, but pretty, the whole chamber is softened and should uh, allow me to run more timing without issues. So. I think that's probably going to be about uh, the last we're going to be showing of these heads. Now it's just a matter of me uh, <laughs> assembling them and uh, then we can move on to the next project which is very likely going to be pulling the pistons out of that motor so I can put ring gap in it and I'm probably going to pull the uh, oil rings out and drill extra oil returns on the pistons because uh, in case y'all didn't know most of the times on a factory LS piston uh, which I have a set of Gen 4 pistons over here I can show you but pretty much those little reliefs right there is the only oil returns on an LS piston which is not enough what ends up happening is the actual oil control rings will actually uh, seize and more or less stop functioning. And that's one of the reasons why LSs are known for oil consumption. So the solution to that is if you pull the oil control rings out, you can take, uh, I forgot exactly what size drill bit it is. I'll have to look it back up. And you can usually drill three or four uh, holes along both of the skirt sides of the oil ring groove and allow it to have more oil drain back which should keep the oil ring from seizing and stop oil consumption and in a, anytime you have oil getting into a cylinder especially in a boosted application oil has a horrible octane rating so a lot of times it'll cause you to again prematurely knock when it shouldn't, which is pretty much death of an engine. So doing everything I can to uh, make sure this engine is reliable. And uh, I think that's gonna do it for today. Make sure to leave your comments, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next video. Thank you.